Hello guys, my name is XRelic and you guys are watching another SND Elite video here. And obviously what I'm gonna be showing you guys here today is a search and destroy gameplay from Call of Duty Ghosts. And I'm gonna be going 18 and three in seven rounds using the K7 on the broken down strike zone map. And I'm gonna go over my class quickly here at the start. The two attachments I'm using aside from the built-in silencer are the grip and extended mags. I'm also using a concussion grenade. And the perks that I'm using are agility, Marathon, Quick Draw, Ready Up, and Dead Silence. Now you'll notice that I do not have focus on this class and that's because when I was using this class in particular, I thought that I was gonna be so close ranged with the K7 and on a small map that I didn't need focus, I would be so close that the kick wouldn't change all too much in the gunfights. And fortunately it did turn out that way. Um, two of my three deaths were from IEDs and the third death I actually got completely outgunned and that was actually a death that was a little bit of a longer range gunfight than I would have liked to do with the K7 because it is a very close to medium range gun. And it was just, in my opinion, a little bit beyond medium range and I ended up losing the gunfight because he was shooting me, I was shooting him, and he outguns me by one bullet. And if I had focus, maybe I would have won that, but you know what, you gotta, you gotta allocate your perks in the best way possible. Um, honestly, I don't think I needed a concussion grenade on this class. I don't think I used it once this game even, but uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this video because it's, uh, it's a complete rushing gameplay. The only deaths are to getting out gunned and once, and two IED deaths because IEDs are just annoying and nearly impossible to avoid. I have found one way to avoid them. Um, what you could do is always listen for them and when you listen when you hear the first beep take one step backwards and either jump or drop to the ground and you'll get damaged but you'll usually survive so there's a little tip for you guys if you guys want to try that out um also the strike packages that i'm using in this gameplay are ied trinity rocket and maniac so that's probably my favorite killstreak setup although i don't get a lot of kills with my killstreaks uh, regardless no matter what the setup is but that's probably my favorite to use because the IED or IMS sorry <laughs> the IMS can cover your back as a killstreak and it has four four bullets so that's very handy Trinity rocket predator missile um, Hellstorm missile you know these are just killstreaks that are very useful in search and destroy and no matter what game you're playing search and destroy in uh, these missiles from the sky will always be very useful as you can get quite a few kills with them and uh, take control of a round easily right off the bat with it and then the Maniac Killstreak, obviously, you get a lot more health, and uh, you become very fast. You can hunt down opponents, you can uh, just run into doorways and rooms, and uh, just knife the crap out of anybody. So that's my recommended rushing class setup, honestly. I think that I still use the K7. Um, sometimes I'll swap over to Armor Piercing from Extended Mags, but it's still a great class setup. So if you guys want to give one a try, then uh, try this one out, because I really enjoy it. Now what I want to talk about today, it's actually going to be an aspect of Search and Destroy that's a little bit different in Ghost than it was in Black Ops 2. Every round in Black Ops 2 was two minutes long, and every round in Ghost is two and a half minutes long, which means there's 30 extra seconds every round. And that has actually impacted the way people play the game, and I just wanted to point it out to you guys that, that the way people are starting to play it is that they spend the first 45 to 60 seconds kind of sitting back and, and trying to pick off kills, where usually in Black Ops 2, people would do that for the first 30 seconds or so, and then the push would be made for map control and objectives. And in this game, that takes about 45 to 60 seconds, which means that there is a long period of time at the start of every round where you can't, if you play the objective and you play for map control, you can't really predict where the enemy team is going to be because so many people are playing it unpredictably and randomly because they don't think map control or objectives are important enough to focus on in those first 60 seconds. So when you're playing, what I've started to do and I've started to have some really good success with it is that I rush up to a point where I want to be at in a certain area and I'll wait there for about 30 seconds. So I'll rush up, that'll take 15 seconds, I'll wait around 30 seconds in that area and pick off anyone that's trying to come through and actually pushing for the objective. And only when the clock timer reaches one minute and 45 seconds left in the round or one and a half minute left in the round is when I'll really start pushing and really start trying to get behind them. Because I figure with one minute 45 seconds left or a minute and a half left in the round, that's when the enemy team is gonna start pushing for map control and start pushing for the objective because they realize that at this point in time, a minute into the round, they really start to need to start playing the objective instead of just going to wipe out the enemy team. And it's worked out really well because one minute and 45 seconds left in the round is about where the enemy team would be at in Black Ops 2 right after rushing the initial rush. 
So if you wait to that point in time, you can actually predict what the enemy team is going to do a lot better than you would if you just flanked right away. Because a lot of people have just been sitting back, they're kind of go still going around the entire half of their own side of the map, and you can't, you always run into people in places that you wouldn't expect to in those first 45 seconds. So that's my recommendation for you guys. Be aware of the timer and make sure that you're patient in those in that first minute and that you don't get caught rushing too hard and get picked off by someone who's playing it very slow and ignoring the objective, ignoring the, uh, the uh, map control and everything like that. So that's a little tip for me to you guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys for watching. Um, this has been X Relic. And uh, that's a very weird outro. My name is X Relic. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, I hope you. I hope to see you guys next time. Peace.